Besides understanding the basic idea of multiple imputation and understanding how the imputation algorithm or data augmentation algorithm works, it's useful to understand the actual workflow that you apply when you use these techniques. There are of course many different ways of structuring your workflow, but this is the one that Stata user manual recommends. I use Stata here as an example because I think that the recommendations that Stata's user manual gives are pretty good and they're applicable also to other statistical software. In fact, sometimes if I decide to use R for some things for an empirical project and I'm doing something that I haven't done before, I might actually go to a status user manual to read about the procedure, how it should be applied, because that's usually a pretty good overview of the current practices and the current literature. So status user manual is a good starting point, even if you're not a Stata user. So what kind of workflow does Stata's user manual recommend? There is the first thing that you need to decide is how do you want to impute your data? And um, this is better understood through examples. So if you have, let's say three X variables, X1, X2 and X3, then you have a Y variable and you are missing this only in the Y variable. You can impute, let's say 10 data sets and there are two ways of doing it. We can impute in the long form, which means that we create 10 new copies of all the variables, including also those with no missing data. So if we start with 100 observations, we impute 10 copies of data. Then in the end, we have a larger data set with 1000 observations because we have 10 copies of 100 observations. So that's the long form. You can also impute in wide form, which means that we just generate new copies of the Y variable that has the missing data. So we have a, in the end, we have 10 Y variables, 3 X variables and 100 observations instead of having these 1000 observations and just one Y variable. So what's the advantage of, of either way? The traditional way of thinking about imputation is that you generate copies of the full data set. But if you have only a, a limited number of variables with missing data, that is wasteful. And if you have a large data set, you might run into memory issues. But that's, less, that's probably less of a concern for most researchers, but for very large data sets, that might, might be something that you need to consider. So understanding which form you want to impute in is the first decision that you do. The next decision or the next thing that you do is to uh, explore the data. So building up a data imputation model is an iterative task. So you need to consider each variable at the time, whether it's imputed or not, what kind of model you use for imputation. And uh, there are two things that you, you should do regularly. One is to describe your imputation model. So which variables are imputed, which are not. Uh, what is the functional form for one variable? What's the functional form for other variable? And this is something that our status our MI describe will do you. Another thing that you need to do is to understand the patterns of missing data. So understanding the missingness before imputation and after imputation is useful. So you might start building your imputation model from ground up, imputing just a few variables at a time and then, then exploring the data and or another alternative would be to build the full imputation model at once. Going for the, with this gradual approach is probably easier if you have any convergence problems in the imputation instead of going with the full imputation model. So this is a general principle. If you have a, a large model that is problematic, then start with the smaller part and see if that is problematic and then incrementally build it. And, and that's, that will help you to understand what the problem is about. So you need to uh, check the missing data patterns after imputation and before imputation. And you need to regularly think about and inspect your imputation model. So these are the two things that, that you need to do. And now let's take a look at how you actually specify the imputation model. Do you need to classify variables into different categories? And, and importantly, you need to uh, tell your statistical software which variables are imputed. So not all variables should be imputed. And the cases where you probably shouldn't impute are, for example, if you have a categorical variable and then you have dummy variables generated based on that category. 
you pr probably want to impute the categorical variable but not the dummies because there's a functional relationship between, between the dummies one if one is uh, one then the others must be zeros the same thing if you have interactions interactions are products of variables you should probably impute the original variables but not the product and so on so and, and you knew, if you have auxiliary variables they need to be registered because we are not generally in interested in uh, imputing values for those but we use them to help in the imputation process. And uh, once we have built our imputation model, we need to print it out and, and th go through it and see if it makes sense. Then the next step is uh, the actual imputation. So you run the imputations and once you have run the imputations, then uh, you need to generate what are called passive or non-imputed variables. And these would be uh, transformations, interactions, dummy coding, and so on. So, so any functional relationships between variables, you need to recreate all these so-called passive or non-imputed variables after the imputation. Once you have done all these, register the variables that you want to input, impute, imputed the data, generated the passive variables, and throughout this process, explore the missing data pattern and uh, verify that the imputation model is makes sense by printing it out, then the final step is that you run estimation within the multiple imputation framework. The idea, the reason why we want to estimate within the multiple imputation framework is that not all statistical software if we just give it the imputation data sets, understand that those data sets have been imputed and uh, we need to tell the command to, to run multiple times instead of running once for a, all the data sets. So th this is what the imputation estimation does and it also aggregates the results. So instead of, of taking all the imputed data sets and running one regression analysis, we need to run one regression analysis for each imputed data set and then aggregate the results taking uh, into account that the standard errors need to be adjusted. And this is what the imputation estimation stage does. Imputation generally should be done after data exploration. So you should uh, explore the data first, understand the missing data pattern first, but doing some data exploration using the imputed data sets might be useful as well. For example, inspecting correlations, inspecting means and standard deviations after the imputed data sets is useful. Also, if you are running, if you're reporting the uh, standard deviations, means and correlations in, in a paper, then uh, you might want to do that the table after the imputation process based on the imputed data sets because those imputed data sets are more descriptive of what you're actually using in the estimation than the raw data. So this is the workflow and um, basically in the estimation stage you can estimate whatever things you would estimate using raw data, doing diagnostics and, and other things, the same thing as with the original model. If you have a regression model, it probably doesn't make sense to do all the regression post estimations for every possible data set, but instead you probably should just take one or, or a few of those data sets for diagnostics.